giving the trainees all those NICU secrets. Teaching the families, bringing you physiology and the latest evidence and management of NICU babies. Just having fun with it. All right, welcome everybody. I'm Dr. Ford, the NICU doc. I've had several nursing friends actually ask about the oscillator and how it works, why we use it. So I really wanted to focus on this last week at teaching some of my nursing friends and also trainees about the oscillator. Today, we're gonna concentrate a little bit on what is the oscillator? How does it work? When do we use it? And make sure you stick to the end because we're actually gonna go through two examples of how we use the oscillator in two different patient scenarios. All right, let's get to today's video. So what is the oscillator? The oscillator is one of the two machines that can be used for high frequency ventilation. What is high frequency? Well, essentially it's what the term says. You are breathing at extremely high rates, and we'll talk about this at, at the section on how does it work. But you can do this with jet ventilation or through oscillatory ventilation, which is what we're gonna talk about today, the oscillator. Jet and oscillator, very similar in how they actually work on the lungs and how they keep the lungs open, how they keep the alveoli open. The main difference between the jet ventilation and the oscillator is that the jet ventilator has an interrupter of flow. So essentially what that is, is that you've got a constant flow and every now and then you set an interruption. Ultimately, physiologically, what this means is that you're constantly giving positive pressure, but when, you, when that interrupter basically shuts off the flow, there is passive expiration. So there is active inspiration, which is that pressure you're pushing in, and then there is relaxation for the air basically to collapse. This is happening really, really fast, uh, but obviously you've got this interrupter that's allowing the stoppage of flow, which gives you that relaxation of expiration. Now this is different from the oscillator. We'll talk about it in the, in the how does it work section, but you have active inspiration, air pushing in actively, and then you have active expiration as you're trying to pull air out. And again, there's more details coming on that. But that's essentially the difference between the two. There is a difference in frequency and rates, but big picture, that's essentially the difference. Now, the oscillator or high frequency ventilation in general, it's really good at separating the oxygenation and ventilation. With what this means is oxygenation, again, getting oxygen into your lungs, into your body, into your bloodstream. Ventilation is actually breathing or getting rid of the CO2. That's essentially what it means. The oscillator is really good at separating two phenomena, which is oxygenation and ventilation. Oxygenation is, again, getting oxygen into the body, into the bloodstream. Ventilation is getting rid of CO2. When you're using regular conventional ventilator, anything that you do to the ventilator will actually affect both sides, oxygenation and ventilation. If you go up on, on your PIP, on your pressure, it'll allow more oxygen to go in, but it can also affect how your CO2 is you know, taken out of the body, how you breathe out your CO2. On the oscillator, you're able to completely separate those two. And I should say on high frequency ventilation, you do the same thing with jet ventilation. You're able to separate those two so that you can do something on the ventilator that will affect pretty much only your oxygen and have minimal effect on your CO2 blowout or being able to blow out your CO2. So that's a really neat uh, trick that we can use and that's why we use this machine. And let's go ahead and get to how it actually works. So how does the oscillator actually work? You guys have heard it in the NICU. You hear that that kind of drum that's, that's in the background, that's in this big honking machine. What that is, it literally is a drum. There is an, an actual membrane that is constantly being by magnetism and by electricity has been pushed forward and backwards, forwards and backwards at extremely high rates or high frequencies. 
what exactly is a frequency and let's jump into the term hertz when you're actually affecting the hertz you're affecting how fast that drum is moving one hertz is equal to 60 breaths so you can imagine if you're on a frequency of 15 you're actually making that baby breathe or that drum actually work 900 times a minute that drum is pumping air 900 times a minute now of course there's the idea that if you breathe really 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 fast you get rid of your co2 you know pretty quickly and you can pass out have you ever thought about why you know dogs don't pass out when they pant or why if you breathe super fast you can pass out why is it then that you can breathe 900 times a minute and not pass out and this is where the gentle ventilation comes from when we're talking about high frequency ventilation the tidal volumes are much smaller than what we normally use when you're using conventional mechanical ventilation when you're using conventional mechanical ventilation you're essentially each frequency or each rate is expanding opening up the alveolus and allowing it not completely collapse because that's why we have surfactant but it closes up close enough to being zero and you're expanding this and opening each single breath when you're given the oscillator the oscillator breath and tidal volume is much smaller so instead of each time you're stretching the whole alveolus and allowing it to close or close or being close to collapsing what it does is that it keeps it a little bit more variant but opening that alveolus you don't completely open you don't completely collapse you find a nice middle ground and it's basically oscillating at this rate that you set in, in this case your frequency so this is the way that we basically don't blow off completely all our co2 and pass out instead of big volumes each time there are smaller volumes but at a faster rate and what it does is that it stabilizes that airway so that it never completely collapses and again never fully stretches and this is the idea again of gentle ventilation because you are trying to minimize something called barotrauma baro meaning pressure so the trauma of the extra pressure that you put in to open up the alveolus you are trying to minimize volume trauma that's the same idea but instead of pressure is done through volume extending too much the alveolus and then you're trying to minimize atelectic trauma which is where you are completely collapsing the airway and having atelectasis by keeping the airway somewhere in the middle and oscillating between those pressures you're minimizing those things and causing gentler airway stimulation hey dad can you put on my shoes son i'd love to but i don't think they'll fit me so now let's talk about some of the settings that you can use on the oscillator so first of all you have your mean airway pressure so your mean airway pressure is exactly that it's the mean of the pressure in your airway and we see this in conventional ventilation as well and you can see the reading it's essentially somewhere between your pip being your highest reading and your cpap or peep being your lowest reading your, your mean airway pressure is somewhere in there but because we talked about the stretch and the relaxation in inspiration and expiration the mean airway pressure will be up and down a lot more than on the oscillator remember we talked about keeping something in the middle so most of the time you're actually going to have a reading that's very close to the mean airway pressure that you set on the oscillator usually when you go on the oscillator you're going about one to two points at least above what the mean airway pressure is on conventional if you're an eight on the conventional you're going to go to a mean airway pressure of 10 and that's usually a good starting point for your mean airway pressure the next setting that we can play with is called the amplitude some people call it the delta p or delta meaning the change and pressures what the amplitude is 
as we have talked about, and we're gonna be talking a little bit about frequency and wavelengths, so we're going back to physics a little bit, but hang in there, okay? I'm gonna draw this so you guys can see this. When you have a normal wave, think of it as surfing, you have a peak to the wave and you have a valley to the wave. Between two peaks of that wave, there is a distance. That distance is called the wavelength. Now the frequency is one over that wavelength. What that means is that if you increase the distance between waves, between the actual peaks itself, then there's going to be a shorter frequency or it takes a little bit longer between wave peak from peak to peak. When we're talking about the height of the wave, that is the amplitude. So a very high wave, you have a higher amplitude, low wave, low amplitude. This, when we apply it to the oscillator, means that as you're going and increasing your amplitude, you're getting further away from that mean air pressure. Remember we talked about mean air pressure? We'll go with 10 again. If your amplitude is slightly higher than that, you're gonna have an oscillation around that 10. If you increase your amplitude even higher, that means now you're gonna be even higher on your amplitudes and it's gonna push away your mean air pressure higher and lower. And what you wanna do is try and keep your mean air pressure and your amplitude somewhere between one to two or one to three ratio. Let me explain. If you're on a mean air pressure of 10, you wanna try and not go beyond 30 for your amplitude because you then start kind of pushing that mean air pressure higher or lower which gets closer to conventional ventilation and it kind of defeats the purpose of actually having the oscillator in the, in the first place. Same thing happens if you're too low, then you're basically not really getting any benefit from the amplitude itself, meaning it's like being on CPAP. If you're on 10 and your amplitude is very small, like 15 or 10, basically a one-to-one -one ratio, then you're basically just on straight up CPAP at that point, just a straight mean airway pressure. And that will cause atelectasis, and we talked about this sort of atelectic trauma. So you wanna find a nice spot between a one to two or one to three ratio. If you're on 10, you know, you wanna start at around 20, 25. If you're having to go above the one to three ratio, so you're going above 30, if you're having to go to 35, then bring up, bring up your mean air pressure a little bit so that you're trying to stay within that one to three ratio. If you're going up to too much of amplitude, bring up your mean air pressure. And that will actually help with the physiology of what the oscillator is trying to do, which is blow off CO2 or increase oxygenation. My sister and I were having an argument because she said I don't know my left from my right. I got so mad, I just write the room.